Hello everybody, my name is Sophie and welcome back to another video. This is the kind of review where I have to give a disclaimer not to my dear viewers but to someone in particular which is my future employer. Please don't watch this. There's like nothing more exciting than reading 600 pages of non-con SEX. It just, you know, what else is there to wish for? There's really not that much to say about this book. How long is this video? <laughs> Am I right? This is the kind of story that was written for an audience that I just cannot comprehend. We'll see very quickly what the vibe is and what the target audience is when I describe the story to you more precisely, but it's just like, this does not need to exist. It doesn't. No reason. Looking at the list of reasons, there's nothing on there. There is no plot that will be talked about today, necessarily. This review will be a Sophie reads out quotes book review. I read out lines of the book to you and then we can discuss them. Because even though it is 600 pages, we're really lucky because nothing's happening. There's an underlying plot that's very, very weak. So weak that on a scale from 1 to 10 it would be a 0. If you are young, don't watch this video. There, This book is just smut. They start doing it like 10% in. It's an, and then they don't stop until 100% in. Also, if you are one of those selective few that I don't think exist that really like this book, then this video is also not for you because I have nothing good to say about it. There is no nice comment that will come out of my mouth in this video. And you can like it if you want. Uh, no, actually, no. I don't respect people who like this book. Usually when people like books, I will let them keep their peace. <laughs> I will allow them to like the books. <laughs> but for this one, I truly have to say it's like haunting Adeline. I'm like, no. Like, there's no ground to argue on. Sorry. Another disclaimer, I know the sign is off. I know it is off. If you're wondering why, just turn it on, bitch. No. <laughs> you don't tell me what to do. This is my channel. If you're saying why is it off, then you did not watch the end of my last video, which was my last podcast episodes, and I will not elaborate. You should go watch it. And you should go watch the end of it if you want to know why that's not on. And then you should watch all of the ads so I can get a new one. Because it's not going to be turning on anytime soon. I still took the liberty to put a little saying on it. That saying is, in case you can't see it because it's dark, I miss Wan D. Who is Wan D? Wan Dick? No, One Direction. I missed him every day of my life. And why am I saying this in a Den of Vipers review? This is the first time I'm saying the fucking title of the book. Because this book was written about someone's dad selling them to One Direction. Hardcore edition. Also, One Direction after Zayn left the band. Because <laughs> it's only four dudes. That was also my review on Goodreads. One Direction, Hardcore edition, my dad selling. Mm. My Goodreads is at honestly Sophie. If you want more funny reviews, follow me. I'll accept you as a friend. And we can be friends forever. Also, I, of course, have to give a shout out to my members who were so dear and nice to stay with me during these past, like, 20 days that I didn't upload. If I don't upload, just know that I am busy. You will say, what are you doing? I'm at university. But I will be done soon. It's exam season. All presentations, all essays are being handed in. And so I, it wasn't voluntarily. I was not, I just can't focus on multiple things at one time. My members get my videos a day early. Even this one. I also get to vote on my next reads, which is the reason I was reading this one. I read this one because of my members. So if you want to put me into misery, you can consider becoming a member. They also get exclusive content such as my Ruby Red movie commentary that I did, which is the German adaptation of the Ruby Red books. And I mentioned this specifically because, yes, everyone's wondering, just like everyone was wondering where I was, I did watch Maxton Hall, which is also a German adaptation of a German YA book. I will talk about it more in a podcast. <laughs> they, go, they get cool stickers and they also get my eternal peace and love and gratitude. And other than that, I love them. So... 
Let me thank them. My members are Haley B, Ashley Ranger B, Trinity ELW, Clara S, Kushime Ta, Deja, Queen Sif, Courtney Grace, Elovet, Probably Brie, Marissa Simons, Joe Beans, Samwise, Friend Lord of the Rings, Usagi Swimfree, Megan May, Carrie G, Sydney, Emmy On, Haley Charles, Asteria, Sweet P, Eric Danielson, Tris, Lacey Lace EDC, Mrs. Preminger, and my newest member, who I am so sorry to, I have to apologize to you, Don Delicious love that name. The day you became a member, I disappeared. Just kind of like the Avatar and the Fire Nation. Like you're the Fire Nation and I'm the Avatar. I apologize, but now I'm back. Well, not really, because my exams are still ongoing, but I kind of, you know, I can't let you guys hanging. What are, what are you without me? You're bored. <laughs> Thank you to all of my members. I love you so much. Thank you for still being here and staying. You better. This review will be sexually explicit but also i'm kind of worried that because i will just be talking about them doing it because that's the whole content of the book and i will get demonetized and so sometimes i might have to replace words without warning so i can still read it out to you if you know what i mean and of vipers was written by ka knight and it has 150,000 ratings on goodreads with a three who the fuck is outside on their mode get home go home it's 10 p.m go to bed. It has a 3.6 average rating on Goodreads, which is really fucking bad. Guys, okay, I want to talk about, I will talk about it in the podcast, but I just wanted to announce, of course, there will be a third book in the, in the, um, no, I forgot the name, in the Light Lark series. She just announced it. It's coming out in November, guys. Should I read it? I will read it. This, ha this has, like, followed me for so long, and I owe Alex Esther my arch nemesis. I owe her my life. I don't. She saved my life with her book. So everybody put in your calendars. Sophie will be reviewing the final installment of Light Lark in November, but we'll talk more about it in the podcast. I have a few things that I want to talk about. Yeah. Don't worry about it. <laughs> oh my god, don't worry about it. I think this is the author's most popular book, but I'm just talking out of my ass here. This is the only book that I see people talk about. And usually when I see people talk about it, they make fun of it. And one time, allegedly, I saw someone on TikTok say that they saw like a, a middle schooler read this or have it with them on the playground. Whether this is true or not, I cannot confirm because I am not a middle, grade, middle school, middle grade teacher in America. I am a German university student. <laughs> you guys have to let me know if you've read this or if you've only heard about it like you didn't want to um, Disgrace your eyes with this content with a lot of the books. I will say read them yourselves make up your own mind I'm very picky <laughs> if you have noticed but with this book you can miss it you genuinely like There's no reason for you to be engaging with this at all I think that this does not need to exist and I think K.A. Knight needs help K.A. Knight is not her real name her name is Katie and Knight is not her real last name. Uh, she is actually British, and that's also really funny. We will be talking about it. She is British. She lives in a small town in Britain, and she lives a double life. Rawr. She writes the monsters you love to hate. And that's also like her thing. She puts that on merch and shit. The crazier, the better. She loves her fur babies, coffee, and a good book. Okay. And she has a Facebook group, which tells you enough. And also, she was at the Apollycon event by Jennifer L. Armentrout, so she is in that bubble, which also explains a lot, the target audience of this. And she was not involved in the drama. There was a Polycon drama, and I made my last podcast. Ugh, I keep mentioning it, but I did talk about it. I did talk about it, and I'm not gonna talk about it again. This book was published in 2020, and now lockdown made us all go a little cray-cray. Does not explain why this was written. Not really. I don't know how old the author is. She doesn't put anything personal online. Um, I think she is like in the same age virginity, virginity, don't know if she's a virgin, she didn't tell me. Age vicinity as Jennifer L. Armentrout, but I do like looking up people's ages just because I think that it explains why and why they wrote things that they wrote and how, why they, or how they, how, do, what am I saying? For a lot of, someone that's in their 20s is gonna write different from someone that's in their 40s. There's nothing else to say about the background. I feel like we should just get into it. I don't know how long this is gonna be. I don't know if this is even gonna be fun. I mean, I'm always fun. <laughs> don't don't worry about it. Just because, again, I have no plot to discuss, but you guys don't know, I'm presuming, anything about this book. Some of you have read it, but I think most people haven't. 
I'm just assuming now. Just, you know, making assumptions. So now you're gonna say, okay, girl, you're making a lot of big statements. Prove it. Prove it. And also, how are your nails so good? They're press-ons. No. I don't know if press-ons are also just nails that you glue on. Or is that a glue on? I don't care. <laughs> I think that there was not a lot of thought put into this book. I think this is also like the second draft. Or maybe even the first one, if we're being bold. This is on Kindle Unlimited. This was self-published. And it has no acknowledgments at the end. Which makes me think that nobody wanted this. <laughs> Nobody asked for this. She has no one to thank because nobody asked for this and nobody supported her in writing this and I'm not supporting her either. This is really fucked up. Especially if like middle schoolers are walking around with this book. Not sure where they're getting it from, if I'm being honest, but like, ugh, what do I know? I don't have a child. At some point I stopped reading on my Kindle, I started reading on my Kindle app on my phone and I think the first few things that I marked did not register, so... I don't know where my Kindle is. It's like all dusty and everything. It's been a it's been a while since I finished this book because I've as I said I've been busy, and so um, let's see how much I remember. <gasps> Battery is almost empty. Oh no! While this is loading, let me explain the premise of the book. There are four dudes that are running the city. What? Which city? I'm not sure. San Francisco or something. I don't know. No, generally I have no idea. I think they're in the south. Of America. It's a bold choice to write about America when you've clearly never been. That's a lie. She's been, she was at a polycom, but it's like, I don't know if she's, if she was at that point, if she's ever been to America at that point in her life when she published a book. These four men run the city. Two of them are related, blood related. The other two are not related and also not to them. There's only like two real brothers and then there's two other dudes, but they call each other family. And the book is named Den of Vipers and you're gonna say, okay, is this just like their gang name? No, they all changed their last name to Viper. They do like crime. They're like the mafia in the city. I don't really know. They collect debt and they kill people and you know how it is in dark romance. And so there's this girly pop and her dad owes debt to them. And so he's like, okay, I'm gonna pay off my debt. Uh, you can have my daughter who I'm estranged with. I have nothing to do with her bitch ass. And they're like, okay, we're gonna let you live another day. And then he lives until the end of the book when they kill him, but like, they let him go because they're like, you can, no, he's like, you can have my daughter. This is not loading, by the way. Hello? They accept this payment of him and they go to the bar that this uh, girly pop owns. Her name is Roxanne, which is really like this. This, the, her whole vibe is like this, which is, she always wears band t-shirts. And so I took the liberty to wear my own. Give me a second. Wait. Shout out to Bon Jovi these days. Shout out. The vibe that I'm trying to get across, that's the main character's vibe, but she's like more badass. Like she's very feisty and she doesn't take no for an answer and she always wears band shirts and she always wears her kick-ass boots, which is literally, literally, literally in the book multiple times she puts whenever she puts on her boots she puts she doesn't put on her boots she puts on her kick-ass boots just so you know she is estranged from her father and she owns a bar in rural texas i don't know where they are i wish i knew i don't think they say it they send men to the bar to collect her and she beats them up because she's so tough she beats them up with a baseball bat and then the next day the dudes come in because they're like, oh my god, our man can't do anything, blah, blah, blah. The dudes come in and they kidnap her. And she also beats them up, but they still manage to take her because, you know, they're also a little bit hot. You get the perspective of all of them, all of the One Direction boys. I was thinking in my head, should I label them as One Direction men? But I just couldn't do that to them. I was like trying to assign them a One Direction um, counterpart, but I just, I don't know. Anyway, there's this really crazy one. His name is Liam. His name is actually Diesel. That's not his real name, that's his fake name. His real name is like, Case, with a K. He's the only one I will be assigning a One Direction counterpart to, which is Liam, not saying that Liam is like crazy or anything. <laughs> not saying that, I just like the name Liam better. He is the only one that's like distinguishable from the other three dudes because he is insane. He was just written like a psychopath. I th also think that he is the author's favorite. She just makes him do crazy things for no reason. And the other three dudes, they read the same. 
I don't know the difference. If you're wondering how crazy Liam is, he says, I was deemed too insane to deal with employees after I burned one of their eyes out for calling me scum. And I feel like the vibe of that line is she was writing and then she just thought of that. Like, why could they call him insane? Um, oh yeah, I burned the eye of someone. Okay, Casbreaker. At this point, they're talking to the dad before he agrees. No, he actually agreed. He says, yes, yes, I understand, take her. He agrees. Liam, like any sensible person would think in this moment while they're torturing a man and kidnapping his daughter, he thinks to himself, I wonder if his daughter is better looking than him. Either way, she'll be ours now. Okay. First sentence structure is weird. This author at this point in her life was not um, mighty of the English grandma. <laughs> Stop, cut the camera. It's not me trying to make fun of someone's grandma when I can't fucking say a sentence. There are spelling mistakes. Sentences are structured oddly. She uses commas. She uses way too many commas. She does not know what a pull stop is. Usually I complain when people don't use commas and don't know how to use commas. She uses, she doesn't know how to use them. She uses them too often. We really need to talk about the phenomenon of men written by women written by men because this is just the epitome of dog romance. Why do we, as a society, <laughs> need to write men like this. <laughs> I don't even know, I can't put it into words. The men in dark romance are always so misogynistic and sexist and I don't get why we're doing that. Can we not write a dark romance with a man that's like left-leaning? Also, you have to tell me, if you are American, my American's watching, what do you call pants? Ah, no, I said it. If you're wearing pants, you say I'm wearing pants. Would you say the word trousers? Because this is where the problems start. Genuinely, I've never heard anyone say trousers. Like, even the British, I think, are... I'm peace and love. Like, I'm just saying things at this point. You know, I just yap. I think even most British people would use the word pants. Just because everything is so Americanized. This lady uses the word trousers in her rural Texas. I'm just... You know. Anyway. My fingers itch to grab my lighter, to burn his house down with him in it until I hear his screams. Fuck, I can almost taste the fear. Feel the flames licking me. My cock heartens in my trousers at the image. Okay. He, like all of these men, has a tragic backstory. Liam, right? His mom died in a house fire, and so he now has an obsession with burning things. And he, because he saw it? And that's why he named himself Diesel. Yeah. Okay. She she owns a bar on the south side of the city, Roxers. He quivers, crying like a pussy. <laughs> Big fat tears drip down his face. I wonder if she'll cry. It makes it sweeter when they do. My dad's outside. I can't say this. I realize that I'm rubbing my C word through my jeans. This is a common theme with Liam. He will just start jerking it. <laughs> Anywhere. Peace of love, you will see. <laughs> and it's like, at this point, and we're 1% in? <laughs> at this point, and I posted it on my Instagram story while I was reading it, I was so curious if this was a joke, because the way it's written, it makes me think it's a joke. But then it kept going, and she kept, like... Th that's why I'm saying it's, it reads like a fucking draft, because the line's just like... it it, it kind of It's kind of written like, just a... Uh, how do you say, like trail of thoughts like she was writing it and then she was like and now this and now this and now this like she was thinking of it on the spot i think she didn't really do any editing or any plotting because there is no plot she didn't have to do that so she was just writing whatever came to her mind kind of like a wattpad story that i wrote when i was 12. anyway one of the dudes um one of the other members of the band is glaring at him to stop and he just winks at them because he's just so crazy, he whips it out anywhere. Leaning forward, I press my lips near the man's ear. I'll let you know if she comes before or after I slice her neck, I whisper, before lunging forward and biting off his earlobe. Uh, okay, Liam. Yet again, another line that reads like she just thought of it on the spot. Like, what could he do now? That's really crazy. Biting off someone's earlobe. Not the first thing that I would think of. Fuck, I need to find a new bartender. It's hard finding one with experience who will last her though. They either speak too freely or fall in love with the bad crowd. Yeah, you can look on the job website for this one, folks. Okay. I think some of these lines I will just leave 
and commented in the room. Okay. Just thought that someone was standing behind me. Don't worry about it. Also, you are wondering, what is this character like, Roxanne, called Roxy? Who is she? What drives her? Well, just so you can get a little bit of a vibe, the first dudes are coming in to kidnap her. She beats them up. But before she beats them up, she thinks to herself, <clears throat> I drink beer with men who would make these guys piss themselves. And I usually drink them under the table. You could say she is one of the guys. You could say she is not like other girls. The thing is, this was published in 2020. I think that there is no need for books like these in 2020. If you want to write this story, or if you write the story, it makes me believe that you did not spend any of your time ever on Wattpad or AO3 or anywhere. Because why the fuck are you writing this as a book and publishing it? Like, that... I mean, she's making money. Get that bag. There's a reason they all call me a swinger. And it ain't because I go to sex parties. She uses ain't and y'all, which makes me believe we're in the South. But she also does say trousers, which makes me believe we're in the south of the UK. Ain't nobody insulting me in my bar. That's just plain rude. <laughs> Don't know what I'm doing. She gets kidnapped. Ugh, you know, you know how it is. Licking off the water, I climb from the shower and wrap a fluffy towel around my body. Before brushing my teeth and moisturizing, okay, <laughs> we don't need the full routine. Again, this is another thing, you would not normally write this, like, I don't care if you brush, brush your teeth, I don't care if you're moisturizing, it's just like, that's unnecessary words you're adding to the page. If I were your editor, I would tell you delete. The entire book. But I just marked this because I'm a hater because I didn't want to say that, I wanted to say I hate fluffy towels. Does anyone fuck with fluffy towels? Not me. Also, a little bit of character description. Again, you don't need any idea of what the men look like besides they have huge ding-dongs. <laughs> I've never said that. I managed to get a brush through my hair and it decides to lie nicely. I have to do an accent. For once, it hangs straight after I dry shampoo it to hell. Bitch, did you not just shower? Did she not wash her hair? Why not just do an everything shower at this? Like, what's holding you back? I take more time with my makeup, applying my signature <laughs> red lipstick, dark liner, and eyeshadow, making my brown eyes pop. Some call me a typical rocket chick. Fuck, I even have the piercings to go along with the tats and makeup. And she has a pussy piercing. It started out as a form of rebellion, a way to piss off my asshole father before I ran away. Then I grew to love this look. And well, now, question mark, now it's just me. But that's enough dredging up ghosts from my past before breakfast. Okay, thanks. I slip in... <laughs> I slip into matching red front closing bra and panties. Do I need to notice? Do I need to know your underwear? Sorry, girl. <laughs> my one vice, dot dot dot, well, dead and band merch represent Bon Jovi. Huh. Still, guys, you're not watching the ad so I can get a softbox. The whole set is falling apart. The set? That's just my room. I'm just at my desk. Guys, what? <laughs> Watch the ad so I can get a studio. <laughs> that would be so silly. Now, ugh, you know, she gets kidnapped. It's like a regular Tuesday. She's going to work. Just put on her matching bra and panties, front closing, red. And she's about to open the bar. There's men coming in. They're like, your father sold you to us. She's like, okay, I'll come with you. But she also says... They're going to learn that money can't buy obedience. I'm no man's object. They're going to regret the day they took me. Vipers question mark? Bitch, please, I buy two. Pissed and bored isn't a good combination for me. I have the insane urge to mess this place up. It's too perfect, too clean. So I do. Grinning, I head to the bathroom and decide to take my anger out on their precious bedroom. Huh? I, she heads to the bathroom, but she takes out the anger on the bedroom. So where are we right now in the room? I could just read out this entire book to you guys. Every line is just an utter disgrace to the world of literature. Okay. She bites too. She's also a viper. At the end of the day, she also is a viper. She marries them all. Spoiler. At the beginning, she is obviously very fierce still in the sense that she tries to fight back. She's like, I'm not going to let myself be kidnapped without a fight, but she did. I don't want to fuck you, but she keeps reiterating they are so fucking hot, like they all have a six pack, they're all tall, I want to have sex with all of them, 
but I will never do that because I hate them because they kidnapped me. But realistically, like, I just didn't buy it. If you truly want me to believe that this girl hates her hot fuck ass kidnappers, she needs to have a life before that and she just didn't. This lady had no friends, no purpose in life. The only thing she did was have a bar that she lived above and then she went downstairs and worked and then she went upstairs and slept and then she went downstairs and worked. That's not a life. No friends, no family, no means, no... Oh, but she, I was going to say jobless, but she does have a job, you know? Why the fuck would I believe that she hates her kidnappers? They're literally giving her a better life. <laughs> They're like making everything better for her. She then decides to get a little bit, um, how do you say, smart on us? A little bit smarty pants. I still want to be free of these men, and to do that, I need knowledge. Knowledge is power. Okay, Francis Bacon, reincarnated. Now that she is in their possession, she is no man's object, but she is in their possession. You can t call it what you want. She starts talking about her coochie in third person at this point, because again, they are so hot. So I did the only thing I could, sleep. This time I had no nightmares though, well, not of my past. Again, too many commas. Instead, they were tattooed knuckles running up my thighs, dark eyes peering up at me. By the way, this is 12% in. And when I jerk awake in the morning line, I'm covered in a sheen of sweat. My, my coochie throbs, again, I have to censor myself, and my thighs are soaked with my own wetness. Girl. That seems like an issue. Groaning at my own mind, losing it, and betraying me in my sleep, I glare down at my P-word. You do understand they stole us, right? As in, they stole us and locked us up? I snarl. She's verbally saying this to her coochie. Before heaving up and heading to shower again. Stupid fucking JJ. It doesn't seem to care that they bought that they bought us. Or that they probably planned- Or that they probably planned to kill us. She's a hussy and is all like, Yes, but they are hot? This is like a full sentence, by the way. I hate them, I do. I want to kill them, dot, 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 but also kind of want to screw them, question mark? After washing, I brush my teeth and cleanse my face. You just got kidnapped. Are you going to do your skincare routine? She is. I ain't putting makeup on for them, but I do brush my hair before slipping into some tight, like, skinny jeans. She wears skinny jeans. Canonly. All of them do. My favorite ones with holes and tears all the way down, showing off my tattoos and pairing them with my loose Harley vest, which I tuck at the front. I didn't even mark this, you know, I just marked the two lines about her vagina, vagina and the rest I'm just reading out to you guys because I'm so generous. I could, like, I want to read out this whole book. I feel like I should do the audiobook with, like, commentary. Also, saying the word screwing them, like, in, in the sense of I want to fuck them, is also a very British expression, right? Does, do the Americans say, I want to screw them? They just say, screw you! Or something like that, I don't know. I've never been to America. Again, another example of a man written by... A woman written by a man. This is a whole sentence, by the way. No, you may keep your piercings. You do look beautiful without the makeup, by the way, but I find myself seeing it as you without war paint. You look beautiful without makeup. You don't need to wear all of that makeup. Of course, we need to somehow justify the fact that these men kill people, that they kidnap people, that they abuse people, that they abuse their power because, you know, we're writing dark romans, but if the people that they kill are also bad, that allows them to be bad. Huh? Would it help if I told you he already his stepdaughter? Her eyes fly wide and I nod. We do our research, little bird. This is Liam talking. This son of a bitch is a low life. I would still kill him if he wasn't. <laughs> Okay. <laughs> but I thought it might help you to know what he is, a monster. Do you know what a monster's fear, little bird? What? She whispers shakily, the bigger monster. <laughs> the bigger monster, sure. You know why six is afraid of seven? Cause seven, eight, nine. That's the kind of line that is. <laughs> he tells her this, um, which then of course justifies that he kidnaps and our words people because he kills our worders, so. Don't worry about it. I, she asked for it walking around in those little undies. You know, we just cannot think of anything creative. Of course, we have to go with the most basic thing we could imagine. This Liam then cuts off um, one of the nipples of this dude because, again, we need to be not making sense at all. Then 16% in the first person she kisses is Liam. He says she tastes like sweetness and life. She's also fucking alive. Electricity arcs between our lips. I feel like you meant sparks. 
not electricity. Where is the electricity coming from? If you're truly wondering how far this author could take it with the rock star aesthetic, I will tell you, uh, the dudes go shopping for her and get her some new clothes and they're all ripped of course because she loves ripped skinny jeans and shirts with holes in them. There are even some ripped loose pajamas in there. Pajamas? I truly hope she means the material. Like some kind of ripped material. This like rough um because otherwise why are there holes in the pajama? She then justifies the fact that her dad sold her to Ron Direction and that they are, um, that they kidnapped her. I thought I was just a prisoner, a debt. So why is he going out of his way to make me comfortable apart from today's lesson, which I guess I kind of deserved, and why are they doing this? It's all one sentence. They stole me, I remind myself, but it feels weak even to me. Did they? Question mark. After all, they were just trying to collect their debt. It ain't their fault my dad sold me. Sure. <laughs> I mean, they could have said no or just let me be free, but I guess they have a reputation to uphold. <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> they had to do it. They couldn't have done anything else. They had to t They had to kidnap her and R-word her. Sorry, like, they have a reputation to uphold. Isn't there a name for this? Like, Stockholm Syndrome. I'm not becoming one of those girls who falls in love with their captors. Nope, not at all. But if they carry on giving me expensive makeup, I might just hate them a little less. Huh? Stupid emotions. Stupid hussy of a JJ. Rolling over, I get up and put away the clothes before kicking off my boots, her kick-ass boots, um, and jeans, and laying back on the bed in my vest, and... <gasps> I can't say the word. It was... It, it will sound like the N-word. I don't want to say it. Um, panties. But the British word for panties. And this is something she uses consistently. She will occasionally say panties. I think I read out a line earlier that said panties. But most of the time she will use the British term for panties. That just doesn't fucking work. But you're in America, are you not? Why am I so far away? Sorry. Just getting comfortable. <laughs> this is 17% and by the way. Truly like, they were just doing their job. Like they could have not done anything else besides kidnap her. What were they supposed to do guys? What were they supposed to do? They're like good guys at the end of the day. <laughs> We have some good ones coming up. This is not gonna end anytime soon. Phrase that's used over and over again, also very nasty to me. I don't like this phrase at all. She thinks that she needs to relieve some tension, some sexual tension, just so her hussy vagina um, stops acting up. All right, think of something sexy, something other than the tattooed powerful men in this apartment. But my mind flicks back to Ryder, one of the dudes, rolling up his sleeves, all that power, imagining him at the gym. <laughs> his body slick with sweat, his cold eyes hard as he pushes himself to be better, faster, stronger. The way his icy gaze would flicker in annoyance at himself. What the fuck is this? <laughs> I'm like experiencing this again. This is for the, like for the first time. The way those lean fingers would grip the weights, slipping my hand into my panties. I groan, biting down on my lip as I find myself already wet, dipping my finger in my cream. The term cream. I don't even know if in this entire video I've said peace and love once because there is no peace and love to be given <laughs> at this point. Another term um, that is being used, this is still in the same scene, I dip my fingers inside my channel. Never heard of that expression of before. I know what you mean. Um, do I agree with it? No. Channel. Disney Channel? All of the people also call her boots, kick-ass boots by the way. The POVs don't differentiate much besides when they think about their past but I couldn't keep up with whose issues are whose and so I never knew whose perspective I was in. Sometimes I even didn't even know if I was in one of the Run Direction's heads or if I was in Roxy's head. I didn't know. I just knew someone was giving head. Uh, we get a whole insane sequence where she loses a game against one of the One Direction members who is into gambling, you know, you can pick your fighter, I don't know who that's supposed to be. She loses the game and then they have a non-consensual intercourse. They made like a bet where it was like, if you lose the game, I get to fuck you. And then she lost the game and then he does do, uh, he does deliver. But she was not agreeing with it. She was fighting back. I'm not gonna read that out to you at all. I don't, you know, we don't need that. 
fighting back, running away from him. At some point, I genuinely, they're like in the hallway on the floor. Liam is watching them jerking off while this is happening. And in my head, it was kind of like, and this is not funny, you know, but in my head, it was kind of like that one sequence in a uh, uh, scary movie where this one lady is getting fucked by a ghost around the room. That's kind of like the vibe I was getting because it was like, I run to the hallway and I run into the living room and like all over the room on the floor on the wall and yeah but she never said no you know if you fight back actively and you scream but you don't say no then it's consensual allegedly according to this book i did mark the line where it said yet not once do i say no but i do have some other lines leading up to that that i would love to read out to you guys just because this is so fun. We're having such a good time. I feel like especially people who haven't read the book, are you like shocked? Like you don't know what's gonna come out of my mouth next. Is that not so fun? He grabs two ice cold waters and I watch the droplets of condensation race down his arms. Lucky bastard. Strolling my way, he leaps over the back of off the sofa in a really impressive display of strength. He's doing parkour? <laughs> Never did I find Procore attractive in my life. It hands me one. I snort and take it, trying not to reveal how much this showing off is getting to me. No, stay strong. Pussy power, dot dot dot. That came out wrong. He's leaning back with his legs spread and his other hand is tucked into the waistband of his joggers, pushing them even lower. Fuck. It's like one of those thirst traps. Oh my god, you're not gonna believe what I'm gonna say. <laughs> it's like one of those thirst trap images you see online that makes you go damn i've definitely liked a few instagram models photos that don't even touch him right now the worst bit he knows it shut the fuck up i snap tucking my hands under my ass to stop myself from reaching out and petting his muscle that's right petting them Okay, I think I posted this on my Instagram at honestlysophyyt if you want to follow me. Sometimes I post on there if I'm not busy doing present because I don't even want to talk about university right now. I have had a lot of stress in recent times. <laughs> Please pray for me. I think they're playing beer pong. <laughs> the bet, as I said, was if she loses, they fuck. And she obviously doesn't want to fuck him. And she just wants to pet his muscle. And so uh, she at one point flashes her tits so that he gets distracted and throws the ball not into the cup and then he's like i'm gonna pay her back and it goes like this our eyes lock as we chuck it then he yanks down his trousers flashing me his cock <laughs> and then she loses and yet not once did i say no it's the next line that i marked and the next one that i marked is her saying wanker as an insult which yet again i have to reiterate is that not very british are there any British people watching me? Shout out to the UK. What's going on over there? We're in Liam's perspective. He's the psychopath one. He was watching her with the other dude. He goes, her beautiful bare body writhing against the floor filled with anger and pleasure. She hated it and loved it at the same time. After she stormed off, I winked at Kenzo, which is the other dude. I didn't even say their names. Kenzo, Ryder, Garrett. So David Garrett, but David Garrett hates women. Not the real David Garrett, but this one. I winked at Kenzo, who's the one that outwitted her, who laughed and ducked into my room to clean up. You have, you ever had jizz in your jeans? Question mark? Not ask, don't tell me. And he goes, not fun. Wouldn't you know, Mrs. K.A. Knight? Wouldn't you know what it's like having jizz in your jeans? By the way, this is 20% in. Someone tried to assassinate one of the group members at one point and so the plot that's going on very low lying in the back is them trying to figure out who's trying to assassinate them it must be someone we know a cast of five characters yet again like five other characters who could it be one of the dudes david garrett he had an ex-girlfriend who was really crazy and she tried to kill him which is why he has a lot of scars not because someone whipped him because we're not in a fantasy but if we were in a fantasy he would have been whipped ex-girlfriend is behind them getting assassinated almost but they're trying to figure out who is behind it and so they visit different people they go different places to figure this out to get information of course um roxy is a big help in this because she knows a lot of people from the bar if you had to guess the <laughs> the nationality of the first evil guy that was an assassin and try to assassinate them who what nationality would you guess 
I'll give you a hint. Yeah. Deutsch. A German accented voice comes through the speakers. It will be done. Oh, no, I have to do a German accent. It will be done tonight. Then I leave the city. I want double. You did not tell me the men you wanted to kill were the men who won this, city, uh, who won this town. Fuck. Always comes back down to us. Doesn't it? Bitch. <laughs> she then becomes a part of the group, like, unofficially because she kills a man. You know, it just happens. I turn just in time to see her take aim and fire at a man creeping up on my left. Obviously hiding and waiting for us at our car. She hits him dead between the eyes. This is her first time shooting someone. But she fires again and again. The bullets hit him in the chest as he jerks and goes down. She's a killer now. And so to celebrate her first kill, they go to dinner. <laughs> She's very different. I think we've established that. I think I don't really need to prove it to you guys anymore. You get it at this point. But just to... Uh, kind of drive the point home, as one would say. Um, I'll read this out to you. Fuck, I could eat everything, she mutters. Looking down, I run my eyes over her tiny curvy body. And put it where? Your attitude, I snored. I'll have a double bacon cheeseburger with cheesy fries, garlic bread, and wedges, she grins at him. He jolts back, his hand over his heart. You sure she's yours? Can't I have her? No, I'm not gonna do it. <laughs> Started to get really mean. Lady, she did not spend any of her time on Wattpad ever. She's never read, or maybe she didn't read stories like this. This is just her vibe. I don't know. The waiter tells them some information about the dudes that tried to kill them, and he says, um, "Well, you have to watch out if you want to be more precise." He says they're gangbangers. Run the Death Eaters on the south side, so they are Harry Potter fans. The Harry Potter fans are coming for them. It's like. Um, they're coming for the Slytherins. The Gryffindor against Slytherin. This is Harry Potter all over again. She thinks to herself, He's so graceful, so refined, so cold, like snow. But snow is beautiful. And when it melts, it reveals all that's hidden underneath. If he were like snow and he would melt, he would be dead. So, just saying. Liam says, Need to piss? Go piss, girl. Also, need to tell you a little anecdote that I've told everyone in my life um, about what it's like to go to my university. Praying to God, this never finds the dude that I'm talking about, but in my first semester, I remember very vividly, and it stuck with me. I'm in my fifth semester now, it's stuck with me. This one dude holding a presentation in front of the class with a group. It was not his turn. It had already been his turn to talk in this presentation, but he was still standing up front with the rest of his group and someone else was talking and he really needed to visit the bathroom while his group was presenting. And instead of saying, or not saying anything, you don't have to say, just leave, <laughs> would have been better. This dude looks into the class and while his classmate is presenting his project or whatever they did that I don't remember he says I need to go piss and he leaves he exits the room okay to be more frank he said ich muss pissen because he said it in German which just means I have to go piss pissen piss the same word and it's a very vulgar word to use in that context Especially while your classmate is presenting your presentation. And whatever. I don't know if they passed. I think they're at the restaurant again or they're still there. Honestly, you know what? Who cares? One of the dudes starts fingering her and at the booth in the restaurant, in the public restaurant, everyone's around them. I mean, only assassins go to the restaurant and everything. The thing is, like, I don't know what city they're in, how big the city is. For me, again, I was just imagining a small town the entire time. They're, like, running the town. Small town, like maximum of 10,000 inhabitants <laughs> but everyone's there all of the assassins she starts uh, so she has something in her channel and she opens her eyes to look at the other guys that are at the table with them the other three dudes sitting around them and she looks at Liam and Liam has his cock out in the restaurant L like not in his pants it's out at the table and also his dick is tattooed and pierced just so you know at this point, this is 26% in, it starts getting very, very repetitive with the I, I'm yours, no I'm not, I'm my own person, you kidnapped me, I hate you, I love you, I actually want to be with you, I want to be part of your 
gang, whatever, and it's the same thought process over and over again until like 80%, just so you know what's going on in the back. Finally, she has sex with uh, Liam, because at this point she's only been R-worded, and so now she has consensual sex with Liam in his dungeon where he torches people and there's like someone dying next to them and they're having they're doing it in his blood he confesses that his name is case with a k also he puts a knife in her ass some highlights from this scene i'm so close to fucking close this never happens i always make sure they come at least three times before i do mm. then if you're wondering how is that whole knife thing working he puts the handle in and not the blade, but he is, oh, I don't want to get in trouble, I'm talking so explicitly guys, that's so embarrassing. Doing it from the back and so it, the knife is in her, in her hole and while he is doing it, he keeps stabbing himself on the blade. I mean, at this point, what am I supposed to say about that? Tuckling, I pressed the handle of the knife to her hole. I managed to work it in an inch, then back out again. The thing is, they do Lana multiple times in this book, and she never does any preparation. That shit's stinky. Until the handle of the small blade sits in her ass. Stepping away, I look at the side. The red welts on her ass, knife sticking from it. Her cream coating her thighs. Fuck, I almost come at the side alone. Grabbing my phone, I take a quick picture and send it to the guys. Letting them know what they're missing before tossing it away and taking her hips again. Mm. So then he stabs himself over and over again. She patches him up after. It's not cute, because what the fuck did you just do? Then the guys go shopping for her again. And now instead of just give, like putting it on her bed so she can take it, they actually give it to her as a present. And she says, thank you, I've never had a present before. And I guess I didn't know how to respond. Huh? In her entire life, she's never gotten a present from anyone. I think even if someone gave you a drink for free, that would be a present, no? Like, it, def it depends on how you define present. She's never gotten a present, they give her a present. It's like expensive jewelry that looks like snakes. And she doesn't know how to respond. She's so shook. And Liam says they have all this money and no one to spend it on, so let them spoil you. And to that I have to say, maybe donate? <laughs> Crazy idea. End world hunger? Also one of the dudes has a meeting and she walks in onto the meeting and it's explicitly said that it's on Skype. <laughs> Not even like Microsoft Teams. No. It's on Skype. I think even in 2020, actually I know even in 2020 we were using Teams in the corporate world. Who the fuck uses Skype? They do clarify later by the way that they donate money. And that they help children, orphans. I was gonna say children without parents, orphans. And that they help children to get off the street and feed, feed them and stuff like that. And then this land just doesn't make sense because like they have no one to spend it on. That's not true. You could literally use it for charity. Alas, you are gangbangers yourself and are worders. So maybe that didn't occur to you. We're 50% in. 46%, I don't wanna lie, it's a little less. We're in someone's head and uh, we get this amazing confirmation of how much time has passed. And now I want you to guess, uh, like all of this has happened. She's, she's in love with him, we can say that. How much time do you think has passed since she's been kidnapped? I know I haven't been doing any time, um, time. I haven't really given you anything to pinpoint it on, but just if you had to give a bold guess, like how much time has passed since the kidnapping to now, where she is fucked two of the guys and she's falling in love with them and she's like part of the group, she's killed someone, blah blah blah. How much time? 46%. When the Vipers do something, we do it hard. And Roxanne? Question mark. She hasn't been here but a week. First 50% of this book take place in one week. Plot-wise, I don't know what's going on after 50%. I think around this part, she then has sex with all, not all of them, but three of the guys. The one dude, Garrett, uh, David Garrett, he hates women because his ex-girlfriend, blah, 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 who's the evil one. So they don't do it until later on. But with the other ones, she's doing it regularly now. She's intertwined with their lives. They all accept that they're like, oh my god, she's part of the clan. She's a viper now, blah, blah, blah. And then the most shock I've ever felt in my life was when I flip the page to a new chapter and it says uh, on, on the bottom of your Kindle, 
how much time is in a chapter. It said 30 minutes. 30 minutes in a chapter, you're, you gotta be joking. You gotta be joking. David Garrett is actually a tattoo artist and he tattoos her and I don't know where. I think either her back or her thigh, like the back of her thigh. But Liam is there while he's tattooing her and they have a really good idea, which is just her sitting on like with a, a pee pee inside of her while she's getting to tattoo. And that's exactly what they do. She's talking to one of the guys and ugh. eyebrow arched. I watched her come back to my room and shut the door, chains in hands and face flushed. I thought I would try and scare him. Liam in his sleep like he does me it didn't work I laugh what did he do slapped me with his cock huh? he probably knew it was you it would certainly stop me if I was trying to kill or rob him I grin men she shakes her head men what man slaps you with his cock I actually don't answer that I don't want to know that. She's trying to get David Garrett to fuck her because he's traumatized and I think at this point they've done like something but they haven't done it and so she's like you can like chain me up if that makes you come <laughs> and he's like okay I think these chains will work that you got from Liam because when my evil ex-girlfriend tied me up which I'm traumatized by she used rusted chains from outside and these chains they look clean <laughs> Diesel, my pussy hurts, I complain, and he and Garrett laugh. Good. Assholes, both of you, I snap. Don't even care that you and your big cocks have hurt my little JJ. And no, I did not replace the word vagina or anything right now. It says, hurt my little JJ. Vajay? 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 <laughs> and obviously her and David Garrett have done it at this point. I stopped marking all of the sex scenes because they're also very repetitive. They just brutally do it. Like, there's nothing exciting about it. I, they're not written any good. Like, if you're wondering if I could give it some grace, I, f I always use this term, sorry. I've said it like five times in this video. And say, okay, the sex scenes are written good. No, they're not. They're really not good. <laughs> she calls David Garrett a bloody wanker. Which, yet again, I have to say, that sounds very British to me. I don't know which Southern American would call someone a bloody wanker. Yet again, I also have to say, I don't know anything about America. And I know a thing or two about 1D, so I do know a thing or two about um, England. I feel like I should start doing a bingo for books like this, like a bad book bingo, where I cross out when certain things are done, like trope-wise. And one of those would be... The mentioning of orbs instead of eyes and so oh how funny he groans and i roll my eyes up to meet his dark desire filled orbs funny can cross that off we do of course need the term orbs in this book otherwise it would not be a, it would not be all right at this point you don't you do have to ask questions to ka Knight. you do have to ask her questions what questions that's up to you i have my own Think of your own questions. And I don't know where they are. They're still trying to find the person behind the assassination. We all turn to see the person it came from. She's a tall woman over six feet with giant breasts. Seriously, what the fuck? They are huge and escaping her tight... Oh, I think they're in a brothel or something. They are huge and escaping her tight pink dress, which clings to her thick stomach and thighs. Her hair is red and puffed up like back in high school. What is that supposed to mean? Red and puffed up like back in high school? Did every person he went to high school with have red hair that was puffed up? What does, when did you go to high school? What year? We're actually getting close to the end now and I'm really happy about it because I've been filming for a long time but I just have to get all of these amazing lines out into the world so everybody knows about it. Also, I want to mention she gets this tattoo and two of the guys are present. One has his pee pee in her and the other one is tattooing her and the other two never mentioned the tattoo and this is like one of the plot holes that i saw people discuss they were like oh my god did the guys never mention her tattoo like she got a fucking vibe of course she got a snake tattooed and the other guys never mentioned it like i would have loved to see her show it to them and their reaction 
I can write that scene for you if you want. You know, I think it's really easy to imitate this writing. Probably not, like, writing this badly is maybe not that easy. 61% in. One of the guys says, Roxy, I need you to listen for once and keep that pretty mouth of yours shut until I'm done. You're the love of my life, darling. Also, they all confess their past to her. She also had a troubled past with her dad, obviously, but that's because he beat the shit out of her. And the dudes were also beat and everyone was beat and I don't really know what their backstories was. But then we have this artificial breakup and by the end of the book, I have to say, a lot of shit happens. A lot of shit happens. I'm gonna sum it up really quickly for you so I can read out the last few lines without explaining the background. They break up with her and she leaves. They're like, you're free, like, we don't want to keep you here, we love you too much. She leaves and on her way wherever she's going because she doesn't have a life, she realizes she doesn't have a life. She wants to turn back around but she gets kidnapped. She gets kidnapped, she's kidnapped for a few scenes. I very much at this point, it was like 70% and I started skimming, I was not reading. There's probably so many good lines that I missed. So many amazing lines. I just couldn't do it anymore. I was skimming. She gets kidnapped. She's like being smart about it. Like she doesn't take it seriously at all because she's such a badass. And then the guys go to save her, of course, because they find out she's kidnapped. And she frees herself from the chains or whatever and goes to meet them outside as they are breaking in to get her out. And she's like, hey guys, did you miss me? Like, that kind of, like, badass, you know, she's just so unbothered. I can't do this anymore. After that scene, Garrett, David Garrett gets kidnapped. David Garrett himself, he does get kidnapped by his ex-girlfriend, who is the evil one. She tortures him, and then they all go to save him. And then at the end of the book, they are all together, and they all get married together. And they live happily ever after. So now let me read out all these fabulous lines to you that lead us to the point of them all getting married. They decide to take down who's ever trying to take them down. And I don't think that at this point they know it's the ex-girlfriend. They think it's someone else, like another group. And Roxy declares, you know, I really want to help. I really want to help take them down. I've had sex with all four of you. And now I just feel like I have to do my due diligence as a viper. <laughs> so she asks, what's the plan? And this is so painfully not American to me. What are you going to do? Roxy inquires curiously, not seeming upset in any way. I'm going to check the papers for all of their family members and employees. Any who are here illegally will be deported immediately. Okay. That's also my first thing that an American gang would do is deport illegal immigrants. You got it, big dude. And thanks to your body, I now have some new toys to take. I grin, holding up the guns. He winces. They're going to murder me. Nah, okay, maybe. But they would make it quick. I shrug as I strap on my weapons like a badass. Female John Wick. Lady Wick. Dot dot dot. Nah, that sucks. I'll come up with a kick-ass name on the way. Okay. I don't think she ever does because she gets kidnapped. As she gets kidnapped, she wakes up from being unconscious and she's tied upside down. The line reads... Okay, so I'm tied upside down, dot dot dot. Ideas, question mark? This is just you writing down your trail of thought, isn't it? <laughs> isn't it? Things I forgot to mention, uh, plot-wise, very important. She does end up killing her own dad. They all collectively go there and he's like, You are the worst thing that's ever happened to me. And then she kills him. She has sex with one of the dudes and he puts a glass bottle in her ass. Hmm. If you're wondering, do they ever do it all together? I don't remember. I don't remember. I've deleted that out of my brain already. It could be that they have a fivesome. It could also be that, and I think that's more likely, she does it with two at a time. But she doesn't do it with all four. While she is, while she's kidnapped, she wants to tease her kidnapper, which is like a bald manly man and she goes hey question mark you look like a secret swifty fan that's not how that goes as far as i'm concerned it's only swifty what do you mean swifty fan are you a swifty are you a fan of the fans of taylor swift no wrong no quick comeback no demands or orders gotta say i'm disappointed dot 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 you promised to hurt me guess it was all talk 
alpha. Yet again, I should do a bingo. But they ignore me. The stupid wank stains and their stupid seductive penises. Peeny? What's the pr plural of penis? Oh, who the fuck cares? Not me. That's all of the highlights I have. If you truly wonder how it ends, again, the epilogue, they all get married, all five. Yeah, it's five. All five of them. Not the men to each other, though. That would be gay. And I don't think they're into that gay shit. Epilogue, six months later. Six months after a week has passed. Where are we going? I asked for the eighth time. I had been busy setting up the last bits in the 15th bar. That's right. 15. They were a hit. Taking off so rapidly, I didn't even know what to do. I guess now I'm also rich. Kenzo opened his 20th casino. What are they doing? Jared has three new gyms and is helping underprivileged and street kids get new opportunities and find ways out of their difficult lives. What the fuck is going on? This is another case of she was just writing this epilogue and she was trying to think in her head like... Okay, he opens a new casino. How many does he have? 20. Sure. I am so glad that this journey has come to an end. This book is truly one for the books. I'm not sure if this book was ever picked up by a publisher, if she ever got a publisher deal, because I have seen it printed in store, but that doesn't mean that it was properly published. I just hope she doesn't, because I cannot imagine a pitching a book like this to your editor. She doesn't have one, obviously. I cannot imagine pitching a book like this to a fucking publisher, period. There's nothing left to say for me about this book. This is something that I will so completely forget about. There's nothing memorable about this. It reads like your standard Wattpad fiction -a one Direction fanfiction. <laughs> and I'm very sure that all of the author's books are also the same vibe. She is publishing one about a circus girl, I think, with another author. They're co-writing and it just seems to be the same premise of the same archetypes over and over again. So I'm not sure. I mean, obviously there is an audience, but I'm not sure what that audience is. If you guys have read this book, let me know your thoughts, opinions. I don't ever want to read another book by this author and I actually don't want to read Dark Romans again anytime soon but I just feel like I have to. I will put up a poll for my members of course for my next read. I don't know what is going to be on the list yet but there will be a list. <laughs> you can follow me on my Instagram at honestysophieyt and on my goodreads at honestysophie if you like. Other than that, thank you so so much for watching, for bearing with me. Let me know your favorite, um, your favorite line <laughs> that I told you about. And other than that, I hope you stay happy, you stay healthy, peace and love, and hopefully I'll see you in my next video. Bye-bye.